The first question from John Phillips is, uh, can you discuss in further detail why you recommend a water-only fast versus consuming coffee or amino acids while in a fasted state? I'm looking to optimize my morning workouts with amino acids or a caffeine boost and want to know what benefits I am potentially missing out on versus the benefits I likely still receive. So coffee, amino acids. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot in that question yes, there. Yes, dense. But um, the coffee question, as you mentioned, is something that is, is certainly uh, it, it's asked quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And um, to sort of address that question, um, I, I think people mostly are asking it in the context of a, a, a type of fasting called time-restricted eating. Time-restricted eating, um, it has a fasting component to it, but it also has a circadian biology component to it. And people might go, well, what is circadian biology? And really, you know, just sort of think about the fact that, you know, you're awake during certain times, so you're awake in the morning, you know, early in the morning, your body produces a stress hormone called cortisol, wakes you up, you're alert, you're active, you, you know, do all your activities, and then as the day progresses and nighttime comes on, you get sleepy, you're making, your body's making melatonin, it helps you with, you know, getting tired, and you go to sleep, and things sort of shut down, right? All so there's these natural this, pathways. Right, it's just sort of, sort of this rhythm, this circadian rhythm, that's what, that's why they call it, you know, Know, circadian rhythm yep. so um, it turns out you know every cell in our body has one of those and including um, you know pathways like metabolism so it's really important to make sure that you're consuming food when you know the metabolic pathways are active you know you don't want to eat when they're not active and so a lot of this work has been done by dr. Sachin Panda at the Salk Institute and uh, some of his colleagues you know they've shown that what activates metabolism is, you know, basically when you take in your first food, you you activate those metabolic pathways, and then they'll they'll be active for a certain amount of time, and then as the day goes on, they become less active. For example, um, if you look at men who eat the same meal early in the morning, and then they eat the same meal later in the evening, same calories, same macronutrient content, everything, they're more insulin sensitive in the morning, and they're less insulin sensitive in the evening. Um, fatty acid metabolism is the same way, so you may think, well, maybe I'll just eat some fat in the evening. Well, it turns out your fatty acids and being able to use those as, ener with, you know, as energy is also on a circadian clock, and they're, it's less active in the evening as well. So with that said, where does coffee come into right. play? Um, you know, coffee, if you're, just, if, you're, if you're talking about coffee with cream, you know, obviously cream is got calories and fat, and, and, and that's, you know, something that uh, would be considered, you know, food, right? Cream. Um, if you're talking about just black coffee, coffee without, you know, any any or espresso, like a shot of espresso, exactly, yeah. or es espresso, yeah. um, something without any calories, essentially. Right. right. Then um, the question becomes, does that count as, you know, starting your clocks? And it, you know, there's no real direct data that has addressed that question. Um, a couple of my thoughts are, for one, we do know that caffeine itself changes the circadian clocks. So if you, you know, give someone a, a cup of coffee later, later in the day, it actually shifts the body's circadian clock, that natural rhythm, by like 40 minutes. So coffee mm. itself is changing the circadian clocks. It's extending it essentially. In yeah, the it's delay yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and additionally, you know, caffeine is metabolized by the gut, it's also metabolized by the liver. So the question is, does that you know activating the those metabolic pathways does that start your clocks we we don't really know if it's enough to or not what we do know is that you know there have been some studies for example a study done by Dr. Ruth Patterson at UCSD she looked at time restricted eating in women that had previously had breast cancer women that that um, ate all of their food within 11 hours and they fasted for 13 hours during that 13 hours, they were allowed to consume caffeine, so, mm. so black coffee or tea without cream. And um, even though they consumed the coffee during their fasting period, they still had a 36% reduction in breast cancer wow. recurrence. So they had positive benefits. Um, along the same lines, there's been some pilot studies in people with type 2 diabetes where they've done uh, time-restricted eating for anywhere between a 6 to 8 hour window. So uh, they're eating within a shorter window and they're fasting for you know 16 or more hours mm -hmm. a day they're also allowed to consume caffeine or tea and they had positive effects on blood glucose regulation insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. weight loss 
You know, so clearly there is evidence in the scientific literature that if you consume black coffee within that fasting window, there's, there's still positive effects happening. So if I can paraphrase, um, while coffee or caffeine may slightly interrupt the circadian window, the metabolic benefits from black coffee or, or tea without additives are maintained? It seems as though, you know, at least according to, to these studies, that yeah. you know, it's not negating right. those me metabolic benefits. Okay. However, the question becomes, if you were not to consume it, would you have a more robust effect? Got it. We don't know. We need to study on this because this is like one of the most common questions we get. But right. I guess the early directional research is, um, and for a lot of people, coffee, including myself, coffee is crucial. Um, okay for right now, and, and we'll learn more about the detail level of what, what's happening maybe. Well, and I also think that if you're talking about just, you know, like I mentioned, time-restricted eating, this is something that you're practicing on a daily basis, sure. right? This is you're eating your food within an 8 to, you know, 12-hour time window, right. and you're fasting, you know, for 16 or and or up to, you know, 12 to 16 hours, right? Um, there's other types of fasting which we can talk about, you yeah. know, where you're doing yeah, we're gonna it longer. We're going to get into that another question with right. different, different so, modalities of fasting. Yeah, and if, in, that, in that case, research has also shown if you consume black coffee or tea without any uh, calories that there's still benefits. Great. So, And what about the amino acid um, aspect? Right, that's a great question as well. Um, and this, this sort of um, touches on another, you know, aspect of the, of the fasting literature and that is, you know, there are, there are many benefits that occur during a fast, and there are many types of fasting. Um, and when you're, when you're actually fasting, some of the things that are occurring are you're your, your lowering different, path, you're deactivating pathways that are typically like a grow pathway. For example, an, it's called IGF-1. Mm -hmm. It's a grow-grow pathway. mTOR is another grow-grow pathway. Both of those pathways are activated by amino acids. And so, um, if you're if you're limiting your amino acid intake along with your caloric intake and everything else, you're going to deactivate those pathways. And the deactivation IGF of those pathways, will go down. IGF one will go down, right. mTOR will go down, and those are essential for the activation of um, some of the benefits of fasting, including uh, a process called autophagy, mm -hmm. um, which is basically when your your cells start to recycle, and interestingly, they seem to recycle damaged components of themselves. So, like mitochondria, which are you know, they're the powerhouse of energy in your cell. Mm -hmm. Damaged mitochondria can be cleared away. So, spring um, cleaning is the process of autophagy right. within your body. You know, pieces of protein, yep. dead cell things are just in there. It gets rid of them. Um, but mTOR has to be you know deactivated. IGF one has to be deactivated for that to happen. Um, you know, so and then there's there's other things as well, like um, which we'll, we can talk about when we get into more of a prolonged type of fast. Yep. Those things also need to be deactivated. So amino acids would be something that uh, would sort of negate that interrupt that natural reduction of IGF one, right. which may interfere with some autophagy. Right. Got it.